Hey there gamers, I'm Probably Senpai, and today we're going to discuss the best methods for collecting Dreamlight Valley's newest and most in-demand resource known as Mist. If you are enjoying the Rift in Time expansion as much as I am, then I'm sure you've realized that Mist is essentially the new Dreamlight. Want to open a new area? You'll need Mist. Want to upgrade your tools? You'll need Mist. Looking to craft amazing new machines? You guessed it you're going to need mist. Due to the incredibly high demand for this new resource, I've been getting loads of questions about how to generate mist as quickly as possible. So I decided to make this the first topic in my Eternity Isle tutorials. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I'm a small full-time content creator, so pressing the like button on this video can make a huge difference for me. Consider subscribing for more Disney Dreamlight Valley and gaming content. If you would like to enjoy the expansion live with friends, consider joining my Twitch community I stream Dreamlight Valley Monday through Friday, and you can find the link to my channel in the video description down below. And with that out of the way, let's get started. If you're like me, you want to generate mist quickly so you can fully enjoy and explore Eternity Isle. We'll start today's guide by discussing the various ways mist can be earned. Once we cover the basics, we'll discuss strategies in which you can truly maximize your mist generation. Arriving on Eternity Isle, you probably realize that Dreamlight duties are no longer active for completion. Instead, while on Eternity Isle, you have a new set of duties called mist duties which of course generate mist instead of dreamlight. This concept also applies to dreamlight tasks, which we were used to seeing and completing in our original valley. Tasks are typically a longer format when compared to duties and can take quite some time to fully complete. Tasks help players generate mist and dreamlight over time. However, some of these new tasks can be fully completed only moments after arriving on the island. We'll discuss more details about that in the strategy portion of today's video. The next method for generating mist involves the Royal Hourglass. By searching for time distortions, players can commonly find mist and other exciting rewards. The rewards gained can be greatly enhanced with the right approach, which we will also be discussing soon. Further, Using the Royal Hourglass to remove time anomalies like the Swirling Sands, or using your Latent Magic to remove the Splinters of Fate, will also commonly provide mist. Though, removing these does sometimes appear as a mist duty, so it's best to always have a few Splinters of Fate lying around, just like with Nightthorns. Lastly, Mist is a common quest reward for almost all quests associated with Eternity Isle. So, when completing quests specific to that region, you'll usually gain Mist along the way. Now that we've covered the primary ways to generate Mist, let's discuss the strategy and methods that allow you to generate Mist quickly and efficiently. This portion of the video will be broken down into two segments. One segment focuses on duties and tasks, the other segment focuses on maximizing the use of your Royal Hourglass. Many of the Mist duties are actually similar to Dreamlight duties, which means many of them can be done in one place in rapid succession with proper planning. So we'll be creating an area on Eternity Isle specifically designed to complete Mist duties. To do this, you'll need to play through Eternity Isle's main quest until you repair the bridge connecting the courtyard to the glittering dunes and the wild tangle. Now that we have access to all three biomes, it's time to create an area where we can grind out many of these new duties. The area will require the following, a wishing well, your home, a garden, a stove or fire pit, goofy stall, storage options, fruit trees, and fruit bushes from all three of the new biomes. At first, this will include strawberries, dates, and almonds. Though as you progress, more fruit will be made available and should also be relocated here. The wishing well is there for easy access. I'd recommend placing seeds in the storage container for gardening duties, as well as fish, minerals, and meals for selling duties. 
which is where Goofy's stall comes in. Keep in mind, you can sell old minerals from the main valley if you'd prefer to hold on to your new resources like jade. We also have our house close by in case we need access to any additional storage. Everything else at this location is simply there to allow quick completion of missed duties. Any duty that requires gardening, cooking, selling, Placing furniture or picking fruit can all be completed in this one location. Of course, just like with Dreamlight duties, there are many biome specific duties and you will not be able to do them here. When it comes to those duties, I'd recommend fast traveling away to complete them until you've managed to stack up or accumulate three to five duties that you can complete in your designated area. There are also going to be duties that require you to access locked areas for certain fruits. Be sure to always have some mist on hand to prioritize these new areas when farming mist. You'll have to open up the overlook to access nestling pears, the grove for dream mangoes, and the wastes or borderlands for cacto berries. Opening new areas will also allow you to access more critters and complete more critter-related mist duties. Capybara's favorite food is cabbage. The cobra's favorite food is eggs. And the monkey's favorite is a cooked meal between three and five stars. I always have pastry, cream, and fruit on me, which is a five-star meal, so that's what I tend to always give to the monkeys. It works for me. Focusing on duties is one of the best ways to accumulate mist because as you complete your duties, you will also passively complete tasks over time. This allows you to gain even more mist. Each time a duty requires you to pick a fruit or go fishing or any other activity, you will typically be progressing towards the rewards of the more long-term mist tasks. With that said, some of these tasks are not long-term at all, and if you have the means, some of these can be completed nearly as soon as you arrive on Eternity Isle, granting you a nice bonus on Mist. For example, if you have sufficient star coins, you can buy 645 seeds from the Goofy stalls of each new biome. This will complete all three seed buying tasks, netting you an impressive 4,650 Mist. Hang out with friends from Eternity Isle is another easy one. You'll probably be spending time with Eve anyway for time-bending purposes. Spend a mere 240 minutes with Eve and this task is complete. The various critter favorite food tasks are also quite easy to finish. With all of that in mind, it is best to let most of these tasks finish naturally as you focus on your duties. Some tasks and duties will require you to utilize your royal hourglass to collect specific items. Keep in mind that you cannot find these at any predetermined location, and if you want to clear these duties, you will have to use your hourglass throughout Eternity Isle. While searching for these specific items, you will almost always find mist along the way. Each reward you find from time bending is considered a treasure, and each independent area on the map has a predetermined amount of treasures available. Once you've cleared the treasures, you'll receive a prompt stating, there is no more treasure in this area, look elsewhere. Fortunately, these treasures don't take too long to respawn. So once you're done visiting other areas, the point in which you started should be refreshed. Time bending rewards the player in a variety of ways, and a surprising amount of mist can be found using the Royal Hourglass. However, what if I told you it was possible to find much, much more. A nice surprise we encountered along with this expansion was the addition of a brand new profession known as time bending. And as it turns out, it's one of the best professions if you follow the right steps. First off, before bringing your time bender along, it is imperative that you get them to level 10 so you can get the full reward. Best of all, you don't even have to finish all of their quests to do this you can save the quests for later. We'll use Eve as an example. Once you find Eve and gain her trust, 
proceed to gift her either purified night shards or roses. Both provide an abundant amount of XP, assuming you have enough. If you don't have enough, you can always gift her regular flowers or five-star meals, but this will take longer. I recommend sticking with purified night shards. I tested this with Gaston and found that it took me right at 110 purified night shards and I was able to get him from level one all the way to level 10 in under 12 minutes. Having a level 10 time bender with you makes a huge difference, but I'd also recommend taking it a step further. As with all other professions, the more villagers you have with that profession, the more efficient they all become. This is why I currently have 23 mining villagers, and I have a whole video about this in the video description down below. For now, let's stay on topic. As for me, I'm planning on making Eve, Gaston, Rapunzel, and Jack all time benders, and I'm not planning on stopping there. If you use the Royal Hourglass enough, you will eventually find the time bending training manual. Just like all of the other training manuals, this can be crafted and gifted to a villager to change their profession to time bending. I'd recommend a minimum of five time benders if you want to gather mist with strong efficiency. Personally, I'm planning to have somewhere between five and 10 time benders, possibly more. The last time bending tip involves visiting the realms within Dreamlight Castle. Larger realms like the Frozen Realm tend to hold 300 to 450 mist, while the smaller realms like Wally's hold only 150. Though, with that said, 100% of the time bending treasures within the realms is mist. This means you can easily net over 1,000 mist simply by traveling to and searching each realm. Unfortunately, the treasures within these realms take far longer to respawn as opposed to the ones within biomes and areas. I've found that it's best to harvest mist from the realms only once a day. Another unfortunate downside is that you cannot bring villagers with you when traveling into a realm, so you won't be getting any bonus mist from your time-bending companions. Though, with all of that in mind, using your hourglass daily in each of the realms is still an effective way to get a nice chunk of mist each day. After utilizing the methods highlighted in this video, I was able to generate enough mist to unlock all of Eternity Isle and upgrade all of my royal tools within only a few hours. And I'm sure that this process will get even more efficient as I create additional time benders and upgrade my hourglass. Now, of course, the expansion is still very new and it's possible I could have overlooked some amazing ways to generate mist. So if you happen to know of any, please let us know in the comments below. If you happen to be seeking Dreamlight in addition to Mist, I also have a full Dreamlight tutorial on my channel. I'll leave a link below in the video description. I'll also be leaving links to our Twitch community and our Discord server. I stream Disney Dreamlight Valley Monday through Friday, and with the expansion finally here, I'm always looking for new ways to maximize my play experience while I'm live. We'd love to have you there as a part of it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Disney Dreamlight Valley and gaming content. As always, thank you so much for your time today and enjoy your adventures on Eternity Isle.